In this video, we will learn how to create a new Spring Boot application from the scratch. And we're going to be doing that using a web interface called Spring Initializer at start.spring.io. Spring Initializer is an online application that you can go to anytime you need to create a new Spring Boot project. It lets you click some buttons, customize your preferences, and then with another click of a button, you can download a fully customized blank Spring Boot application for you to get started with. So let's check it out. Okay, so what do we need for a starter Spring Boot application? It's basically a Java project, right? So as with any Java project, here are the things we need. A, we need some kind of a project structure, where to put our classes and what's the directory structure we're gonna be using. B, we need all the dependencies configured in the class path. All the libraries and all the jars needs to be added to the class path and configured there. And C, we need configuration to allow us to run the project. We need to be able to run some commands and start the project, quote unquote, run it, all right? So Spring Boot projects are typically Maven or Gradle projects, and these let us specify and configure all three of these. There's a standard project structure, and uh, there's a build file that lists all the dependencies required, and it also has the associated build commands. All right, so how do we get started? How do we create a Spring Boot project from the scratch? We're gonna be using the web interface at start.spring.io. So the first thing you're gonna do is go to that URL, start.spring.io, this is gonna bring up the web interface called Spring Initializer. Let's just call it Spring Initializer. This has a bunch of controls which let us configure what kind of a Spring Boot application we need. At the very top, you have three dropdowns. First, allows us to choose what kind of a project we need. Do we need a Maven or a Gradle project? I'm gonna choose Maven, but both of these are build systems which let us configure how your project is structured, what, how you run your commands, how dependencies are managed and all that stuff. The second dropdown allows us to choose the language. Are we gonna be using Java, Kotlin or Groovy? So these are the three options that are available at the time of recording this video. I'm gonna stick with Java. And then the third dropdown allows us to choose what is the Spring Boot version that we need. At the time of recording this video, 2.1.0 is the latest stable version, so I'm gonna choose that. And uh, this is going to configure the basics of my Spring Boot project. After this, we have the bunch of text boxes at the bottom. There is this thing called Project Metadata. This is something that you might find familiar if, you're, uh, if you've used Maven or Gradle. So this is kind of like the coordinates for your Maven or Gradle artifact. You have the group ID and the artifact ID. The group ID is kind of like the package name which lets us specify something that associates this project with your organization or some kind of a grouping system that you have. Uh, this is usually like the package name, a reverse domain format. So I'm gonna use io.javabrains for this text box. The artifact ID is the name of your project. So here I'm gonna say my API. It's a pretty good project name. So next, now that I've configured the project, the next step is to figure out what dependencies to add. Spring has its own ecosystem. There are a whole lot of projects and sub-projects in the Spring ecosystem. And what projects or sub-projects you need, what libraries you need really depends on what you're doing with your project. For instance, do you need security in your project? In that case, you should add Spring security. Is your project a web application? In that case, you should add Spring Web. So there are a whole lot of those uh, sub-projects and libraries. How do you figure out what to add? How do you figure out what they're called? Well, that's where this text box comes in handy. This is kind of like a searchable text box where you can type in stuff. So here you see I'm typing web and it gives me the option of choosing Spring Web. So I can click on that button and then add it. So this is gonna add Spring MVC. Uh, I can add a bunch more stuff here. I can type the value that I need and then it's gonna do an intelligent search. And then uh, let's say I wanna add DevTools. So here, I'm adding DevTools here. DevTools lets us uh, customize how the Spring project behaves in a development environment so that you can customize how it reloads, make life easier as a Spring developer. So I'm gonna throw this in as a dependency as well. So this is how you can search for your dependencies and add them. It, comes up with an intelligent list in this text box and you can choose what you want. 
Now with this, you can click the button, generate project, and this web interface is going to download a zipped Maven project with Java, with Spring Boot 2.1.0, with the group ID and the artifact ID that I mentioned here, and with two dependencies, web and dev tools, right? It's as simple as that. However, let's say you don't even know what is the name of the dependencies you wanna search, right? If you don't even know what you need to begin with, how are you gonna enter it in the text box? For that, you click this link here, which says switch to full version. So when you click on that, this form kind of expands and gives you more control over what's going on over here. So here you see on the left, you have a bunch more text boxes. You have the description, uh, where you can enter some more description. Again, this is all gonna go into the build file, the palm.xml in this case, since it's a Maven project. Uh, I can choose uh, what kind of packaging I need, whether it's gonna be a jar or a war. I'm gonna use the jar because uh, the fat jar is all the rage these days. Uh, I can also choose the Java version. Uh, I'm gonna choose the latest version of Java over here. But what's more interesting with this full version is all these uh, list of dependencies that you see over here. You see, instead of uh, typing in the text box and searching and messing about not knowing what you want, this is kind of like a full menu of all the options that are available to you, along with some description about what that option does. So in this case, let's look at web. It says it's a full stack web development with Tom Gad and Spring MVC. If you want to build a REST API, great, that's exactly what you need. Then here you see there are a bunch more. You have uh, Jersey, JaxRS, you have WebSocket if you need WebSocket. And here on the left side on core, we have DevTools selected because we entered it in a text box, but then you have a bunch more. You have security, if you need Spring security, you have session, cache, validation, a whole lot of stuff. So you can scroll down this list and see what are the things you need if you wanna add them to your project. And uh, checking these boxes has the same effect as entering uh, the value in the text box and then choosing it, right? It's the same thing. It's just a different way of looking at it. Uh, and this is pretty handy if you're beginning and you don't really know what you want. After you've done all this, you're happy with your configuration, you can click the button called Generate Project and it's gonna come up with a download. It'll download it to your hard disk. All right, so now I'm in my downloads folder and here you see this is the zip folder that I got downloaded. Here is the extracted zip file, and uh, if I navigate inside, you see this is a typical Maven project. Here you see a palm.xml, and uh, you have a source directory, which contains the source uh, as you would expect in any Maven project, All right? So this is the Maven project that has been configured for us. Now, the next step is to load this up in an IDE, and let's see if we can run it. The IDE that I'm gonna be using in this video is going to be the Spring Tools for Eclipse, all right? So you access that by going to spring.io slash tools. If you don't already have it, this is where you can go and download this ID. You have downloads for various different uh, operating systems. You also have a bunch more options for different editors like Visual Studio Code and Atom, but uh, I'm just gonna be using the Eclipse version for this video. So once you've downloaded the Spring Tools suite, you extract it and open the executable. Uh, in the case of Windows, it's an .exe file. In the case of a Mac, it's a .app file. You open it, the IDE opens. And now in the Package Explorer tab, I'm gonna right click and choose Import. So this is gonna let me import an existing Maven project. Uh, that's the option I'm gonna choose, click Next. And uh, the root directory is going to be navigated to the directory that I downloaded and extracted, all right? So this is uh, what contains the SRC file and the palm.xml. As you can see over here, I'm gonna click finish, and uh, this is gonna import the project that I've downloaded into the IDE. And you can see at the bottom here, it says importing Maven projects. It's doing a bunch of stuff. It's gonna look at the palm.xml. It's gonna see what are the dependencies that are configured there. You know, there are a couple of dependencies that are configured for sure that we selected in start.spring.io, that's the web and dev tools. Uh, so it's gonna download all the necessary jars and it's gonna add it to the class path. If you open the palm.xml, here you can see all the things that uh, should be familiar. Again, uh, the web interface has added these values that we've entered in that interface into the palm.xml. Now when it's done, here you see the package explorer tab has the Maven dependencies library and the JRE library. So we're all set to run this. In order to run, what you need to do is open the SRC folder 
and uh, here you should see a uh, API my API application dot Java file. The name of the Java file is going to be the name of your artifact with the word application at the end of it. So this is going to be the starting point for your uh, Spring application. And this, as you can see, has a main method. So what you can do is, believe it or not, you don't need any web server or anything of that sort. You can actually right click here and then choose run as Java application. And in the console, you can see that this starts up your Spring application. And at the very bottom, you should see the My API application should have started. And apparently it did that in a little over two seconds. All right, so with this, you have started a Spring application. What does this do? This honestly doesn't do anything because this is a blank application. It doesn't know how to deal with web requests. You've configured it to be a web application, but you haven't really done anything to handle web requests. If I were to open a browser and type localhost 8080, you're gonna see an error page, which is kind of anticlimactic, but I'm gonna leave you with this point. This is how you start any Spring application. And uh, I'm gonna make a follow-up video where we're gonna configure a Spring MVC controller to handle the default URL. You don't wanna see an error page when this starts up. Let's create a controller which handles this base request, the base URL request, and shows something. Click this link to learn how to do that.